Management of the Ghana Manganese Company has described as untrue assertions that it shortchanged government to the tune of 1.94 billion cities between 2010 and 2017. Now, on Monday, the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Kweku Asuma Chirme, ordered the company located in the western regional town of Takwa to stop all mining exploration and export of minerals. Now, the order came after an audit of the company's operations between 2010 and 2017 revealed huge financial loss to the state. Now, following the shutdown, management of GMC has asked the over 1,500 workers to go home as they resolve the issue. There is more in this report. This is the second time this year that the company is in the news for the wrong reasons. The recent one is an allegation of non-payment of taxes and price manipulation between the periods of 2010 and 2017, contained in an operational audit report of the company by government. The Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Kuku Asumachem, who ordered the shutdown of the company, alleged that this has cost the nation about $360 million, equivalent to one point nine four billion CDs. He also said the company defaulted in payment of annual mineral right fees in excess of four million dollars. Management of Ghana Manganese Company has described as untrue these allegations. The chief operating officer of the company, Benjamin Achukwashi, said the company has fulfilled its tax obligations over the years, adding that the audit is inaccurate. GMC also says their inputs were not taken during the audit. Ghana Manganese Company employs over 1,500 workers. Their fate is left hanging as management has been directed to suspend its operation. They have been asked to stay home till the matter is resolved. Management is calling for calm among the workers and other stakeholders. Now, recruits under the Youth in Afforestation program must up at the Jubilee Park in Kumasi on Wednesday to protest delays in the payments of the allowances. The recruits say they will continue to hold similar exercises to compel the government to heed to the terms of engagement. City News is half is Tijan reports. This is the third time recruits under the Youth in Afforestation program in the Ashanti region are embarking on a protest since the program was launched in 2018. Government engaged the over 6,000 youth to embark on tree planting exercises and the clearing of bushes as part of measures to restore Ghana's vegetation cover. Delays in the payment of the allowances have compelled the frustrated recruits to agitate as a way of piling pressure on the government to address their grievances. They want government to ensure prompt payment of their stipend. Some of them spoke to City News. As you all see, we are here for our money. Because we have worked for the past six months, we are not receiving our money. Meanwhile, police have picked up one of the recruits who had a handcuff in his possession. Mensha Divisional Police Commander ACP Kwekubwa says the suspect is being investigated. Now turning our attention to education, the Ghana Association of Private Senior High Schools is mounting pressure on the government to include their schools in the free SHS program. The association has in several press releases lamented the impact of the free SHS initiative on their businesses. With a few weeks to the beginning of the third year of the policy, the following report takes a look at some of the challenges faced by the institutions as a result of the program. The students who come here, the parents are also taxpayers. And you want Peter to pay John. Why? 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 Do you know the amount of people who come to me here? Reverend Nana Ketu Obuadum V, the proprietor of Punk's Senior High School, is obviously left devastated with a toll the implementation of the free senior high school is taking on an institution he built from the scratch. A school that used to admit over 400 first-year students is virtually on its knees. The Faith Baptist Community Senior High School in Medina is also one of the numerous private second cycle schools bearing the brand of the free senior high school program. It's, it's unfortunate. We are using the 5,000 because if we should have about half of it collapsing, let's say out of the 250, even if we should even have 125, 
collapsing. It means that you are going to render about 5,000 people. And we are, we are scared when we talk of the 125. Some have totally collapsed, like Jabez Senior High School of Central Region has collapsed. The free senior high school policy will enter its third year in September this year. The first year of its implementation in September 2017 during the 2017-2018 academic year saw a total of 361,771 students enrolled. 432,680 students were also enrolled on the program in the second year in September 2018 during the 2018-2019 academic year. With this trend, it means if the program continues, then most private senior high schools may collapse, which will have effects on employment. Now, for many people, the delay in finding justice for crimes committed against them is effectively the same as having no redress at all. Now, even so, justice alone has not always been sufficient for many, especially when a life has already been lost or severe damage has been caused. Now, that's the story of Kate Edu, a mobile money vendor who was disfigured by armed robbers at Goma Fete in the central region after they poured acid on her. Now, although her attackers have been jailed for 20 years, Kate is not enthused because her dreams have almost been shattered. Now, City News' Carvis Tete finds out how Kate is coping after that horrific acid attack. Viewer discretion is however advised. The night of Monday, March 25, 2019, was a negative turning point in the life of 23-year-old Kate Edu. The mobile money vendor was attacked in her shop by robbers at Gomwa Fete in the Gomwa East District of the Central Region. They did not only rob her of an unspecified amount of money, but also poured acid on her face. The acid affected her face, eyes, and chest area. Kate was rushed to the village of Hope Clinic, where she received first aid and was later referred to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Kate's attackers, 24-year-old Yao Danso and 21-year-old Daniel Amo, who were arrested two days after the incident, were jailed on Friday, July 19, 2019, for 20 years after a four-month trial by the Kaswa of our court circuit court. But Kate is not necessarily relieved about the news that her attackers have been jailed because her dream of becoming a nurse hangs in the balance due to the damage done to her. Because the accident happened, all my plans are spoiled. I wanted to be a nurse. The 23-year-old is even more worried because she has run out of funds for further medical treatment to correct or minimize the effect of the damage done to her face, and particularly her eyes. Kate says she suffers from stigma and has become a mockery in her vicinity. She fears that her eye, which is gradually deteriorating, can prevent her from achieving her dream. She says she needs an amount of 20,000 cities for further treatment to enable her go back to school.